Welcome back to another how-to. Today, we're gonna to reinforce some E30, E36 compact trailing arms. So, we've got a cardboard box. We can cut our templates out and make a pattern. Then we've just got some three mil sheet steel. These are just offcuts. We'll work out how big we need to go. I've already installed reinforcing plates on another set of these previously. So I have a pretty good idea of where we need to reinforce and what we're gonna reinforce. Two common spots are across the arms, but if you come down too low, you then have to modify the reinforcing to make sure you're clear for other subsystems underneath the car. And then main body to suspension strut. So we'll get our cardboard, make a template, and then cut it out of the steel. When you're working out your pattern for reinforcing, you need to define where it needs to be reinforced first. I've seen other places have a bar go across the bottom and then the people who have installed it have had to modify it. So we don't wanna come down too low. Up here has plenty of strength. There's a corner or a radius going across. I don't think we need to come past that mark. Let's mark out there first. Where does it change? And it rolls up about there. So we're not gonna go any higher than that. Plenty of strength through here with all of these compound radiuses and curves. Then we come over to the other side, it's about there. The first line is gonna go from there to there. We then wanna work out how far down we've, we wanna come, just guessing. Let's go from about here. And we don't wanna have them the same length because it will come down too far. We just wanna get a straight line and we'll go there. Now we know where the reinforcing plate's gonna go. We can then template out our reinforcing plate. Chuck our bit of cardboard on. We know we're gonna cut from there to there. We know we're gonna cut from there to there. Looking pretty good so far. Can't see the line, but really it doesn't matter. It's a reinforcing plate. You've also got to consider that this cardboard is maybe half a mil thick. The plate that we're going to use is three mil thick and we've got to work out where we want it to finish. So that's going to be the top, but if we make that three mil thick, it's going to be sitting up a little bit higher. So I've lined it up underneath. I'm just going to mark across. Now I'm going to leave a little bit of extra meat on there because it's better to cut up to a line than cut more than you want off. All right, so currently we're sitting flat, but we want to probably come in on the radius so we don't come past these two faces. And there's a little bit of a radius on here. So we'll draw a little bit of a radius and then come back in. Maybe a little too aggressive. Here's good. We need to trim out across. Still a little bit more at the top. It's almost looking like a straight line now. I think we still want to twist it around a little bit more. So, that's gonna to be too much. But this is why you make a template out of cardboard first. Now that's looking good. Now we want to work over this side. It's flat, radius is about here. So we're going to mark there. And there. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, cool. I think just for the sake of it, because I know there are clearance issues on the bottom side, we might just draw a little radius. Oh, that's looking pretty schmick. We should be able to mirror this on the other side. So let's double check to make sure it fits on the other side. Would you look at that, eh? Pretty dang good. One template done. The next one is gonna have a little bit of a curve in it. So it might be a little bit more difficult to do, but let's get the second template sorted. Second spot is gonna go from in here around to support this is where the strut gets bolt bolted to and goes the opposite way. It's currently upside down. 
So we need to define where we're going to weld. We're going to start here. We're going to cross up, cross up. Mark our cardboard. Eyeball it and just cut it parallel. We'll use the cardboard side so we can draw on the back. Draw on the other side. Would you look at that, eh? Maybe a little bit tighter on this radius. Just keep offering it up until you get it right. We've got a rough idea. But I'm not overly happy with it, so let's just get it a little closer. It keeps coming out the same line, so let's just trust it, eh? It's pretty close. I think that's pretty dang good. We'll mirror it and see if it works on the other one as well. And I forgot one reinforcing plate. This is where the sway bar attaches to. And you do want to reinforce it because I have seen them break off. We're just going to get a piece of cardboard again. Mark underneath. Mark across. There we go. We'll drill the hole through the other side after it's welded on. We'll cut two of them out. And there's another reinforcing plate. We got some flat bar still left over from the rear subframe reinforcing. 50 mil seems to be the perfect size. Nice. We'll cut these out. We know we need the inside line. So as long as you're cutting around texture, you're all good. Everything's gonna be hot. Don't touch it with your hands. We're only maybe half an hour, hour in. We've already got our plates. We do need to clean them up, but grinding disc, flap disc, I've got a sander, so I'm gonna go chuck them on the sander. Let's get these cleaned up and then we're ready for welding. All right, we've got our plates. Now we just need to prep where we're gonna weld onto the trailing arms. And then we've got reinforced trailing arms. This is surprisingly easy for this one because there is a radius in here and a radius in here. I have just put a bit of a chamfer on both sides. And then we just wanna give it a quick mark. We'll remove all of the paint on that side. We'll use a bit of this steel just to make sure we're sitting at about the right spot. We know we need to clean up either side of that. And then the last one, we more so need to mark out how far, but we can. We know we just need to clean up around all of here. Get all of that paint off with a wire wheel or angle grinder, whatever you've got. And then we're ready to weld. Just giving them a wipe and then we'll spray them with some weld through primer. Dang it, I just put my hand in the weld through primer. I always forget the clamps. The clamps! Right? <laughs> Don't put your clamp in the bore of it. You don't want to arc out in there and then create mess. I've put weld through primer on the rear of it. We're going to work out where it wants to sit naturally. That's sitting pretty nicely. So because of the way we've made the plate, we don't need to hit it down to follow the contour of the trailing arm. I think that's all sitting in there pretty nice and neat. Let's tack it in. I'm pretty happy with how that looks. Look at that from the other side. That looks pretty schmick. Let's get the other plates in. Again, because you're sandwiching two pieces together, you want to make sure that you're putting weld through primer on both sides. That's completely the wrong piece. Is it? Yes. That was the wrong piece. Well done. Just want to make sure it doesn't separate as I weld it. We can drill that hole in a second. We'll get this last plate welded in. This should be the only one I need to hammer down to get sitting nice and neatly. Before anyone says it, I know, I know. I should have preheated this casting before I welded my reinforcing to it. 
if you're following along at home and you're really concerned about it, look up a video on welding to cast. Or if you wanna just tell me how wrong I am, let me know in the comments. This bit down the bottom is gonna to have to be hit up. That bit will have to be hit down. This bit that I'm hitting with the ball peen hammer never should have been there. It needs drainage in this corner. I shouldn't have designed the template the way I did, but you'll see that coming up. As you can see, oh, no you can't. As you can see, looks pretty good. That side looks pretty dang good. A hole to drill. And then look at that. That is clean. That's sick. I think that came out even better than I was expecting. All right, let's get the other one welded up. I'll do that one off camera and then we'll give it all a bit of a clean up. We got reinforced trailing arms, baby. All we've got left to do is drill out this hole. Eight and a half. We are gonna pilot drill it. Get the center punch. Looking pretty good. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's just bolt clearance. Just a little wobbly. Bit of timber. Drilled hole. We're good. Give it a clean up on the other side. There is some welding spatter that I want to clean up, but there's even factory welding spatter on there that I want to clean up as well. That's reinforced. So now you could clean it up, paint it yourself. I'm going to send these off to get sandblasted and then the crash shop next door is going to put a really nice lick of paint on there. The same color as the steering linkage that I made in a previous video. So I was just having a look at this plate. This is somewhat of the orientation of the trailing arm. It sits down a little bit more, but because of the way I've welded it, if water or dirt sits in here, it will just eventually get underneath there. So on the back here, I'm just gonna drill a hole just to make sure that it doesn't accumulate too much crud in there. Now we've just got somewhere for the water to go. Got some clearance. And with that, we now have some fully reinforced trailing arms. Now there are other reinforcements that you can do. This is what I've gone with. I gotta say, they look awesome. Your next decision is what you wanna do as far as bushings go. I've gone with the super pro non-concentric bushings. So then I can adjust toe and camber from the bush without having to weld something onto my subframe. Here are the bushings. You can see the holes aren't concentric with each other. So you can adjust this in here and it changes the position of the trailing arm. I've just installed the Super Pro bushings. It's two halves that slide in and then the metal sleeve with the concentric hole slides in through the outside way easier to install than a OEM bushing. Gives you that extra adjustment when it comes to toe and camber. I'll leave a link in the description just so you can find it for yourself, but much easier to install. And one of the reasons why I went with this kit over the OEM kit. I do have videos on the rear subframe and the front subframe doing it the same way where you make your own template, cut out your own steel and then weld it in but I do have another giveaway coming up for Worldwide and it's a pretty good one. I'm actually pretty excited to give this one away. So stay tuned, thank you very much.